There being a big misunderstanding in the U.S. of Iran because of partly who is putting out the ideas in Iran, like expat community, Washington, et cetera. Um, what do you think is the biggest misunderstanding of well, I, I think you, the, the, we're not looking at it from the Iranian point of view. I mean, I like to list the Iranian grievances because that's my that's my training is to look at is try to get in the mind of somebody else and you know what are they thinking? You know, let's take Lebanon. I love this example. The first hostages and murders of diplomats in Lebanon were Iranians. They were killed by Christian Falange, America's allies. Um, this unleashed a whole war in Lebanon. This was July 1982. Three Iranians, very important Iranian, uh, was killed. Uh, you had the you had the Airbus shoot down. You had um, the, the Mossadegh coup in 1953. Um, you had the Soviet invasion of Iran. Uh, you have a, a wounded, formerly very, uh, you know, a civilization that was one of the greatest in the world is being talked to like a third world country. And I don't care if an Iranian is is, is pro-American or not. You just cannot talk to the Iranians like, you know, like, I don't know, like they're what? You, you can't do it. Um, it. It's that dialogue that we're missing. And also what we don't understand is that Iran has nothing to do with Islam. I mean, it's an Islamic country. The majority of people are believers. But it's an, they, they have ridden this anti-colonial wave. Um, simply by uh, identifying Israel as a colony of the West and they have brought all these movements. It's not a personal like between Hamas and the Iranians or even Hezbollah or the Iraqi Shia. It is simply anti-colonial. Wherever there's occupation, Iran is against it. It's a very simple thing. It's very effective. Uh, Iran's influence in the Middle East would the West got out, or Israel went away, and miraculously, Iran's influence would stop right there. What do you think specifically is um, contributing to this popular understanding of Iran? Oh, it's it's clearly the the, the Israelis and the, the, the very pro-Zionist Americans, because what they're simply doing is is taking threats. Um, you know, to Israel and, and building them up. Now, that's not to say that the Iranians, the, Ameri the Iranians have killed, they've shed a lot of American blood. I mean, that's not to say it at all. It's just that they're portraying, they're taking statements from Ahmadi Neshad and taking them as policy. I mean, Bush said that we were leading a crusade in the Middle East, but no one took him seriously. So why do we take Ahmadi Neshad seriously? I mean, and he's not really the de facto executive power. So it's this, this continual rhetoric and the fact that, that Iran is so powerful that it can create insurgencies. It can, does have Hezbollah, which is a very effective fighting force, the most effective fighting force in the Middle East. Scares the hell out of Israel um, because they got beat in 2006. And in and, and popular um, Muslim mind, Middle Eastern mind, it, it's you have you have finally somebody who can beat Israel. And um, you talked about um, the importance of reciprocity as like the beginning of a you know some sort of U.S. Iran relationship. It has to start small. Um, and I, I mean it when I say Iraq. Yeah. It should start in Iraq. We should just simply sit down with the Iranians openly, or however they want to do it. I mean they could they could start a back channel if they wanted to. So we have to do something about Iraq. If it falls apart. It's going to affect our allies in the Gulf, our Arab allies, and it's going to affect Iran. I mean, Jindala is a Sunni Takfiri organization, which is scary for Iran. And so we need to stabilize Iraq, whatever that takes. If it takes um, American money, if it takes Western money, if it takes separation, if it takes partition, uh, we cannot do partition in Iraq. If it comes to federalism without the Iranians, you simply cannot put a hostile government in Iraq and expect the Iranians to say, oh, that's too bad. We'll have to live with it. It will not happen. It's, it's, it's the same situation we see in, in Lebanon when the Syrians say we cannot have a hostile government in Lebanon because it involves our survival. 
And, and that's the kind of reciprocity we have to look at Iraq through the Iranian eyes. That does not mean turning it into a pro-Iranian Shia republic. There is some common ground with the United States, and then you expand from there. But if, if, if we just leave it, if we leave it, it, you know, a conflict with Iran and hope for the best, no wonder the Arabs are terrified. And I know why they're terrified. They're saying, you look, you invaded Iraq, you got rid of this army that protected us, the Iraqi army, and now you're leaving like that? I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. How do you think?